In this investigation called Complex Spirals, students are using their knowledge from sequences and series and complex numbers to investigate how a complex value geometric sequence converges. When studying geometric sequences and series in specialist mathematics, we normally work with real numbers, but what if we worked with complex numbers? What would that look like? As part of this task, students will be calculating powers of complex numbers, plotting points in the Argand plane, observing and predicting patterns, and from there, generalizing results. To define a complex number in a calculator screen, we'll be using a define button when is control and template. So I will call the complex number U and I will define it as two plus two and then I need to use I from this template I. So this is a define button and if I press enter, the calculator now remembers that this is the number. So if I recall it, it comes bold and I can say u squared and it will tell me what u squared is, u to the power of three and so on. This complex number is in Cartesian form. So we can have the real part and the imaginary part of a complex number and we can plot those coordinates on the Argan diagram. There is another way of determining the position of a complex number in the complex plane. And this one is finding the distance from the origin. And this distance is called modulus. And modulus can be recalled from the template. And if I wish to determine modulus u, it tells me that modulus u is two square root two. But of course, distance from the origin to root two will be a circle. So I will have many complex numbers like that. So the other thing I need is the polar angle, which I can get from menu number, complex number tools and polar angle. And I go U and get angle 45 degrees because I set my calculator to degrees. If I repeat it now in radians, the angle will be pi on four. So if you haven't learned quite radians yet, you can be working in degrees, or if you're familiar with radians, we usually give the polar angle in radians. Now, instead of doing all the powers one by one, I can also define the powers. So if I saw let's n be equal to, and I will be using the least notation because I want it to be three, four, five, comma six, because that's what your investigation is asking. So if I know that my powers are from zero to six, if I now use the modulus and I will u to the power of n, it will display me all the moduli of my complex number to the power of n. This is the exact values or control enter. I can see that those numbers are increasing. I can do a similar thing for angle. So if I go again, menu number, complex number tools and polar angle, but this time I will try all the angles from U to N. I can see those angles in radians and alternatively, I can also see those angles in degrees. The convention is that in first and second quadrant, we give the angles in anti-clockwise direction, positive angles. In the third and fourth, we are clockwise direction and negative angles. We also be asking the students here to find the series, so not just the sequence of the 
powers, but also the series, and you might be familiar with the sigma notation. So this is this button because I already have N there. So this time I will use K and I will go from zero to the power of six and I will use my number U to the power of K this time and I will get a big number. So let's try a different complex number Z. Let's say I will go one third plus one third I. So the complex number which will have a different modulus. So let's compare what modulus of Z is and we can see that the modulus is this time a fraction and now if I try to use the sigma notation again and I will go k 0 to 10 and I will go z to the power of k and again I can find that as a decimal and I can vary the how many powers I'm using in the series. So if I go 20 and this time I go control enter and that allows me to vary those powers. So this will be investigating the series. You will be able to see that there is some pattern occurring there as well. Next thing I will talk about is using the notes pages. So what I will do, I will insert a new problem and this time I will use notes. It's called notes pages. The advantage of notes pages is that once I defined a number, I can vary it and different things will be recalculated automatically. So let's say that we define the complex number, but in the notes page to define a complex number, I need to start with the maps box and we use control M for a maps box. And now I will define my complex number here. Again, I will go one third plus one third I. And now this complex number is defined. Again, I can define in the similar way N as we did previously using the list 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I can find now in a similar way modulus of Z to the power of N. So that's just introducing it because what happens if now I close that and I have already prepared my notes page and I will change this complex number let's say to 1 plus 2i and you can see that everything gets recalculated very nicely so this is the advantage of using the notes page for your later calculate, calculations when you'll be doing different complex numbers. One more thing using notes pages is drawing a spiral on the Argand diagram. So in the notes page, you can insert a slider. It's already done, so it doesn't show here, which I've done. And I defined number W here. And now what we are doing and the detailed instructions are on the student's worksheet, we're defining the sequence of numbers. So W sequence is such that we have W to the power of K, the variable is K from one to N. And then we're finding the real part of this sequence and imaginary part of this sequence. So if I start, let's say with three here, and I press enter. This is my sequence and 
these are the real parts and here are the imaginary parts and also real parts and imaginary parts here. The reason of doing that is because we want to sketch the spiral or plot those powers as the sequence. So what we need to do, the graph entry needs to be a scatter plot. And you can recall the X values as real parts of the sequence and the Y values as imaginary parts of the sequence. So now if I have my slider, I can clearly see what happens with those powers. And this is part of your further investigation. And again, it allows you to vary your complex number with various powers. So powers are quite big. So to go back to this document, you can now vary and put another complex number and that will allow you to draw a new spiral. For question five, students are asked to plot values for partial sums. Students may find it useful to use the complex files PNS file that comes with this investigation. Upon opening the file, students can navigate to page 1.2. And in the map box, they can enter in their complex number. So for example, we can enter in one third plus a third I and press enter to uh, input your complex number. From here, students can navigate to page 1.4, and then by clicking the slider in the top right-hand corner, they can then generate the more partial sums and observe and predict the behavior of the values of the partial sums as the number of terms within the partial sums increase. In question six, students will plot the spirals using parametric equations. Once students have plotted their complex geometric sequence on a graphs page, you can press menu and then go to graph entry edit. Select the parametric equations. The investigation. So our X values are given by the modulus of Z. Now when raising to a power, when using the parametric template, we need to use T as our variable. And then we can multiply by a cosine of T times the angle of the complex number. So we can use the angle command to get our value for theta. And similarly, for the y values, same thing, except this time we're going to multiply by sine. And press enter, and there is our spiral. Now, if we decide to zoom in closer, we can kind of get an idea of what's going to happen as we zoom in closer. But what we could also do, and what we note there, is the spiral seems to stop along this y-axis. If we press tab to go back to our graphing uh, template, if we want to see more of the graph, we can vary these t values down below. So for example, we may wish to increase this to 15 and press enter, and it'll generate more of the spiral to see what's happening there. And that should conclude all of the key CAS skills needed for this complex files investigation task.